Unless we're on that narrow path, we're not going to come out into that place of fruitfulness and lavish abundance that he's got for us. I'm not going to have much fruit to take to the Father. I might have a bit. This is a season of radical change. And if you are uncomfortable with radical change, just get in line with the rest of us because none of us are comfortable, right? It's none of us are comfortable with it, but we want it. We welcome it. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, this is something else that we need to get an understanding of. Otherwise, we're not going to be moving in the fullness of what he's got. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. So we're supposed to set forth his wonderful deeds and virtues through our lives. But we have to understand that in order for that to take place, you are a chosen race. So if you ask me what my race is, what would it be? Yeah, but in the, in the natural? Caucasian? Australian? Irish, yeah, a race. The only race I am is a kingdom race. This is where you're going to have to strip yourselves of anything that you feel describes who you are. Like Paul said, everything that I thought was worthy is really nothing but I'm going to consider it dung. So the race you are is a kingdom race. It says that you are a holy nation, a holy nation. What nationality are you? Kingdom. I am no longer an Australian citizen. I am here because my father gave me a visa from heaven to be born here and to do a work here in this nation. But in reality, if you want to know where I'm truly from, I'm a citizen of heaven. That's who I am. And my first loyalty, my first responsibility is to heaven. I cannot agree with governmental legislation that legislates sin. Cannot agree with it. And the simple fact that some of my tax money goes to pay for pride marches, yeah. euthanasia, abortions, we have to say in the realm of the Spirit, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we divorce ourselves from ungodly legislation in this nation. We divorce ourselves from it and we ask that there would be a separation over our finances, that our finances would not be used to fund evil in this nation. However you do it, however you do it. In fact, those that are... are perpetrating evil and wickedness in the nation, force them to their knees at the foot of the cross or get them out of the way so that righteousness can prevail. So your race is now God's race. You're children of God. You're a holy nation. You come from the kingdom and you're a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. As a king, you go to war. As a king, you make decrees. As a king, you rule and reign in life. But as a priest, you minister unto him. You worship at his feet. You pray for other people. You intercede for them. You need to know when you're, minist you're ministering as a, a priest and when you are ministering as a king. But I'm telling you right now that there is a lot of change that has to happen within us. We want the new wine. We want to be the new wineskin. I want to be on the very forefront of what God's doing. That's what I want. But I'm happy for him to position me any place he wants. So as David McDonald preached last week, and again this week I'm bringing it to you, allow the Holy Spirit to bring to light any leaven in your life that needs to be gone. Whatever it is. I remember um, a, a young couple um, that 
beautiful story. A young couple really wanted to get their life right with God, uh, married. But she'd come from a single parent family and he'd come from a family where the wife wore the, wore the pants. And so she ran the household. And the church they were going to at the time, the church I was at, said to them, you're out of order and you need to come into order. We are all out of order in some way. If you think you're not out of order, whether it's financially, whether it's relationally, whether it's at work, whatever it is, you are being deceived. And this is where the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth needs to come in and needs to show us where we are wrong. And he will give us Christ's grace to change. Anyway, the pastor sat down with the, 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 the couple and said to them, you're out of order. The man is the priest of the home. He can be saying things like, you're out of order. The tithe belongs to God. You're out of order. You're holding on to unforgiveness, bitterness or whatever. There's different scenarios for different things. And they really wanted to change. It was, it was wonderful to see what God did. It was not an easy, pain-free transition because it was long-held beliefs and long-held habits that they had. But when I would ask her for a cup, you know, hey, do you want to come out for a cup of coffee? She said, oh, yes, I'd love to. And she said, oh, no, wait a minute. I just need to check with my husband. And so that was her way of changing and to bring our order in. But there's order missing in every area of our lives. Come on. If you think you've got your life in perfect order, let me introduce you to Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, and they will show you that there are areas in your life that needs to change. We have not got order. It doesn't matter how holy we think we are. It doesn't matter how righteous we think we are. It doesn't matter how well we think we've got our life together. Let me tell you right now, there is no one in this room that has their life without an area of disorder because otherwise you wouldn't be here. You'd be there. So it's a simple thing to say, Holy Spirit, where am I not in order with the kingdom? And show me how to change. It could be financial. That's usually the big one. Or it could be health. Um, the body of Christ is besieged with financial and health disorders. And, we, and yet we believe that by the stripes of Jesus Christ we are healed. We believe we have the right to divine health. We believe that Jesus took our poverty at the cross and gave us his prosperity. But those two areas plague the body of Christ. So surely that is saying to us that somewhere we have not got the revelation we need to have. New wineskin is not going to be that comfortable to allow God to do. But it's what we all want. Yes. It's what we all want. Yes. I want Christ to be fully formed in me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, an issue in my family where some of the relationships between one of my, my children and the rest of us is very strained. It's really horrible. And I used to get really hurt every time I see something on Facebook or I see something happen. I would really feel the pain of a disjointed family. And you know, um, it just, it just, it just hurt. It was just, just hurt. <clears throat> and then I was thinking about saying, God, I don't want to live with this perpetual pain. And I don't want to live with this feeling that my family is so disjointed. I'm, I'm believing that I've prayed that you would heal it and I'm believing you are healing it. But I don't know how to stop the pain. And he said to me, well, careful how I phrase this in case it's seen. Um, so and so has the gift of a pastor on their life. They're not pastoral, but you know, they've got a gift of, they've got that loving pastoral gift. See that as a redemptive point in your family, that they married into your family to release 
a redemptive pastoral compassion upon your family. It's just that they're not yet in that position. So now it's like, oh God, I just really want to thank you that so-and-so carries such a pastoral gift and that you've brought her as a redemptive um, person, member of our family, and that when she's properly positioned, then things are going to be amazing. My last name, Torty, which is my married name, which is sometimes you might need to think about these things, but my last name, Torty, actually means twisted, lame, and torturous. How's that for a last name? Wow. Right? Praise God for Smith and Jones, yeah? But that's what it means. And I kept that name because I had six small children and they, would, they had their father's surname. And if I went back to my maiden name, it would just be confusion. You know, they were six and under. How do you explain, well, you've got that surname, but mummy's name is this one. So I thought, oh, I'll just, <laughs> just annoy my ex-husband and keep the name. <laughs> but when I found out it meant, oh my gosh, twisted and torturous and lame, my goodness me. So I prayed about it. I said, Lord, I just want to thank you that I am the redemptive yeah. connection to take that curse off that name and to release the blessing of God throughout the family. Yeah. 